Action News, Delaware Valley's leading news program with Don Tollefson and Jim Gardner. It is Monday, September 26th, and of course our big story on Action News tonight is the death of Jim O'Brien. An official of the FAA traveled to Gilbertsville, Pennsylvania today, the site of the United Parachute Club, the site of Jim's fatal accident. The FAA official found no trace of equipment failure as he examined Jim's chute. Police have put together their official report, and it says that Jim became entangled in the chute of fellow jumper Doug Sullex, 500 feet in the air. Understandably, Sullex himself is too distraught to talk about the incident. We did talk to police detective Joe Donahue, who talked to Sullex. Down on it, he kept yelling. The Jim. Jim was saying that he wanted to cut away, and Sullex kept yelling, "Don't cut! Don't cut!" He said, and even the people on the ground said they could hear him yelling that. And Jim just decided to cut away. It's just a decision he made. And just was a wrong decision, I guess. The FAA official says he will take the results of his investigation to the agency in Washington in the hopes that Jim's tragic accident might help avoid such incidents from happening in the future. The Montgomery County Medical Examiner performed an autopsy today and told us that Jim died instantly and suffered no pain. A private memorial service will be held for Jim Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Jim will be buried Thursday in Houston next to his father. Many of you have already expressed your condolences to Jim's family. You can send such wishes to us here at Channel 6, and we will make sure that Jim's family receives every one of them. The family says any donations you wish to make should go to the American Heart Association or the Muscular Dystrophy Foundation. But let us turn to the thoughts of Jim that we want to remember. Jim O'Brien's career, a remarkable story in and of itself. Action News reporter Colin McNeil now tells the story. It was August 1970. A young radio announcer from near Houston, Texas was hired at WFIL Radio, and a very special broadcasting career began to take off. I do, it's 8.06, six minutes after 8 o'clock. Jim was nicknamed the Midday Cowboy, but nixed the promotional gimmick because he wanted to become a full-time Philadelphian. He went about it with a vengeance. Although he was busy on the air, he always found time to take some kids on a trip or wrestle with a bear. His career moved steadily upwards. He landed a part-time job as a weatherman for Channel 6 and did dialing for dollars. Well, I came with four friends just to see you. And Neighbors? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Tell us about your family. Jim was popular, so popular that he was in demand at both WFIL Radio and Channel 6 TV. He was brought on board full-time to do the weather and then to anchor the new news. Surely that was enough work, but Jim loved broadcasting, and soon he was working 18 hours a day doing his radio show from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., then dialing for dollars, then the noon news, then anchoring the 5.30, and finally delivering the weather on the 6 and 11 o'clock news. In 1977, Jim left radio and, and devoted all of, of his McDonald's, efforts to TV. A Georgia woman has filed suit in Pittsburgh saying she deserves a break from the McDonald's fast food chain. Sharon Williams is her name, and she says the McDonald's... But the news and weather weren't enough. Jim worked on primetime, the station's most popular public affairs program, and was prominently involved in the major special events Channel 6 televised, the 1980 Phillies Parade, and the 1979 visit of Pope John Paul II to our city, which he covered with an appropriate sensitivity. Again, that incredible feeling of emotion sweeps the room and sweeps all of us up in it. But for nearly a generation of Delaware Valley TV viewers, he may be best remembered as Jimbo. The happy-go-lucky, lovable, funny, crazy weatherman. Record low temperatures from the Dakotas to the Carolinas. 23 degrees the national low this morning in uh, a place up in Minnesota. <laughs> I forget exactly where. Anyway, uh... that was his last broadcast Friday night. It's fitting that he left us all with a smile. That's where it's going to be. As Colin McNeil, Channel 6 Action News. With the warm afternoons and the cool nights. Jim O'Brien was a true sportsman in every sense of the word, and whenever there was an opportunity to take on a challenge and conquer it, Jim was there. It started during his teenage days when Jim would, on the spur of the moment, mount his motorcycle and head for the open plains on his famous chrome pony. We took a couple of rides across the country uh, to Alaska, to California, and down to Texas one time, and, and over the course of my describing these uh, adventures on the motorcycle, I, it just came out one day. I said, it's my chrome pony, and uh, that stuck. His love for the daring took him even higher. In 1980, Jim decided that he wanted to scale the side of a mountain, and after some intense training, he reached new heights. But Jim's greatest passion would take him off the ground even higher. 
On December 15, 1980, he got into the cockpit of a single-engine plane for the first time, determined to get his pilot's license. And within a few short months, he took his first solo flight at a Bucks County airport. But the epitome of his love for soaring came two years earlier when he strapped on a parachute. Ironically, his first jump, like his last, over the New Hanover Township Airport had some problems. Did you see the cores get twisted? Uh, yeah. <laughs> when I came out, the cores were all twisted up, man. The highlight of Jim's jumping career came during opening day of the Philly season at the Vet this year. While thousands of people watched, he landed in the stadium with the game ball. And in classic O'Brien style, he described the thrill in one word. Yeah. Although Jim O'Brien met a tragic end, he was satisfied that he was fulfilling his life's dreams. And he was the first one to tell you that he was not afraid to take a chance. I, over the course of a, of a year, and, and take some chances. And uh, in those chances, I, I keep coming out okay. Now, I, I may get it on the way home this afternoon, but I feel responsible to, uh, to keep myself in as good a condition as I possibly can. And I... I'm Gary Majors, Channel 6 Action News. On the day of Jim's burial in Houston, the Philadelphia City Council will take action on a resolution honoring Jim O'Brien. The resolution will be sponsored by Councilman Jim Tyune, who said today, Jim O'Brien was Philadelphia, and Jim O'Brien will always be Philadelphia. Philadelphia Mayor Bill Green had this to say about Jim's death. Someone as young and vital as Jim, who pushed himself to excel, who had such an upbeat personality, um, who adopted this city. I mean, he had a personality as big as Texas, the state he came from. Uh, but adopted this city. He was a Philadelphian. He cared about the city. He cared about his job. He cared about being number one. He was full of life, and to me, there's always a special tragedy when someone as young and full of life as him uh, loses their life. And... In Trenton today, the New Jersey State Assembly stood for a moment of silence to honor Jim's memory. Jim's death prompted this response from Governor Tom Kane. Well, obviously, shock and, and sadness. Jim was a very articulate and very good newsman, one of the best, obviously, in the whole region, not the best. And in addition to that, a very, a very warm human being, I remember. Here are other comments of several other notables to this tragedy. Jeff Klein, the director of the Muscular Dystrophy Association to which Jim devoted so much time and effort. I am shocked at the loss of Jim O'Brien. Like all people in the Delaware Valley, our association has lost a dear friend. These are the words of Philadelphia District Attorney Ed Rundell. I am deeply saddened. In addition to being the most vibrant personality in broadcasting today, Jim was a serious newsman as well. I will never forget the long analytical interviews that Jim and I did on primary night this past spring. Pennsylvania Governor Thornburg said, quote, Ginny and I are saddened by the loss of a friend. With that twinkle in his eye and that smile on his face, O'Brien could make even bad weather forecasts sound promising. O'Brien was a legend in his time. And these the words of John Cardinal Kroll, the news of Jim O'Brien's tragic death leaves me very saddened that a young, talented man is cut off in the prime of his life. Would you please convey my condolences to his family, friends, and co-workers at Channel 6, and please assure them of a special remembrance in my prayers as they mourn his loss. Of course, the reaction that would have meant most to Jim is your reaction. Here is a sampling of some of the things that you had to say about Jim's death. He was just, just a, seemed like an all-around nice guy. He, uh... He was always lots of fun on television. You could tell that he was, people look forward to watching him. I still cannot believe it. I think it's, he had everything to live for. He was so full of life and to be taken so fast. I, I, I just can't believe it. He had a very magnetic personality that he reached out to the uh, audience that he, uh, and uh, he really seemed to be right in the same room with you all when he was talking. It was just interesting to watch, you know, the, the news, the weather. I mean, he'd always say something funny, you know, and you'd laugh and you'd go away and you'd still chuckle 10 minutes later, you know, you think about what he said. He was great. He was a great man. We're going to miss him. Action News will broadcast a special half-hour tribute to Jim O'Brien at 8 o'clock tonight, and we will be back with more news when Action News continues in a minute.